Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my C Sharp tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to start covering a little bit more complicated things. We're going to talk about generic collections, generic methods, generic structs, and delegates. And like always, all the code as well as a transcript and cheat sheet for this video is available in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to have two classes. I'm going to have animal.cs and program.cs, and this is just going to be very, very simple. I'm going to come in here and create a property, a string, and this is just going to be name, and I'll auto-generate the getters and my setters. And now what I'm going to do is just create a constructor, and this is animal, and it's going to get a string that's the name, and we'll give it a default value of no name. And then we're just going to go name is equal to name. All right, quite simple. And we're gonna come back to this, but now we're gonna jump over into the main program file. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna talk about are what are called generic collections, and they are going to be type safe and provide some performance benefits over the collections that we saw in the previous part of the tutorial. And you define the data type whenever you are defining this generic collection. And this is going to be a dynamically resizing collection. And one of them is called list. And we are going to be able to store animal objects inside of it, of course. So let's just call this animal list. And then to generate it, you go list. And then what it contains. And then you close it off with the parentheses, of course, to call the constructor. Now you can also create a list with standard types. Like if you wanted to have a bunch of ints inside of here, you could do that as well. And here we could just call this number list is equal to, and then of course you just go new and list and then int like that. But you're going to define that type whenever you create it. And we're not gonna do anything with this, so we might as well just get rid of it. Now you're going to be able to add values, um, well, before I get rid of that, let's say if you wanted to add a value to our number list, which isn't even created, but whatever, you would just do this. However, if instead you would like to add objects into our animal list, we can come in and go animal list and add, and then you could either put the, you know, create the object outside of it and then add the object, or you can just create the object directly inside of here just by going animal like that. And then you could also give a value to name like this. So you have an animal named Doug. And let's go and create a couple more of those. Let's create another animal inside of here called Paul. And let's create a final one. And let's give that the name of Sally. All right, so there you go. You have three animals in your animal list. Now you're also going to be able to come in and add in values at a specific uh, index. So you, you can do that with insert. So let's say you wanted to add a new animal inside of here, starting at index one, it's gonna move everything else to the right, you can do so. Animal again, and let's say that we want this one to have the name of Steve, we can do that. We're also going to be able to remove uh, items out of our list with just remove at and you can just say, let's say you want to get rid of whatever's in the number one index. There you did it. You're going to be able to come in here and get the number of total animals inside of here. So let's say num of animals and let's go grab that. And here you're probably going to remember that you're going to be able to use count for this because you've used count so many other times. And of course, we're going to be able to cycle through all these animals with four each again, just to find what each of those is going to be and whatever you are going to be cycling through. And then you just throw in whatever you have here. And if you want to get the name and print it out on screen, you can do so like that. And let's run it, see what happens. And there you can see, whoops, I did something a little bit wrong. Let's go check what I did. Oh, I forgot to get rid of that quote. Let's go get that quote, throw it right here instead. File save it, rerun it again. And now you can see number of animals is three. Remember we added an additional one, but we then went in and deleted it. And then we printed out all the different animals we have. All right, let's continue. It's also important to know that likewise, there's going to be stack and the T represents whatever the data type is. So here we had animal was what we had inside of there. And then we also had int. We're going to be able to do exactly the same things we covered previously with stacks using these generics. And then you're also going to be able to use Q 
And once again, the T just represents a data type that you define whenever you create it. You're also going to have a dictionary and it's going to have the T key as well as the T value. And those, like I said, are going to work exactly the same way. And you can test those out for your homework. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about are generic methods. And I'm going to jump over into the animal class and create one. Okay, so here we are. And basically, anytime you need many overloaded methods that differ only by their parameters, a generic method is normally a very good solution. And how we create one is we go public and we go static void doesn't return anything. And this is going to get us a sum. And here we are going to define that we don't know the data type. However, we're going to go reference and T. We do know that the return data type is going to be the same as this parameter here and also this parameter right here. So that is what we're saying. We know that for this to work, all of these data types are going to have to be exactly the same. Now inside of here, we can go double and double X is equal to and convert whatever is passed inside of here into a double and it's going to be able to work with anything. And then likewise, we're going to do the same thing for another one of these guys. Let's just call this Y and convert this into number two. And then this guy is going to output our answer onto our screen. So here we can go in and go double X. Oops, let's change that a little bit with the curly brackets and plus and then double Y. I keep hitting the wrong curly bracket thing here. There we are, curly bracket is equal to, and then we can add them up and I'll put that onto our screen. So double X plus double Y. And that's going to receive any data type and go and perform that arithmetic. And now I'll jump back into program and show you how it works. So let's come in here and let's create two integers. So we'll say five and Y is going to be equal to four. What we're going to be able to do here now with these guys is call the animal and then specifically get some. And then what we're going to do with get some is just go reference X and reference Y. Call that and then let's go and do another example here that's quite the same. So let's just copy this guy. And then this time let's have it work with strings instead of working with simple integers. Throw that inside of there, get rid of that and change this to a string just to show you that it is indeed going to work. And we'll rename this to string X and we'll throw our quotes inside or our double quotes inside of there and string Y and throw our quotes in around the four and then animal get some. And here we'll just change this to string X and change this to string Y. So we have that all set up and we can run it and see that it is indeed going to work no matter what the data type is that you pass inside of it. Okay, so pretty simple stuff and pretty useful stuff. Now we're also going to be able to generate or create generic structs as well as classes. And I'm gonna jump down here and go and create one just so you can see what one of those looks like. So we will go public and your homework can be, you're gonna see how the structs work and then you can go and create a generic class on your own. And I know you can do it and I think it's good practice. So I'm gonna leave that for you for homework. Now, of course, you're gonna be able to have generic fields inside of your struct as well as your classes. So let's say we wanna have width inside of here and privates T once again and length inside of here. You're gonna be able to have generic properties. So we can have public T width and then we could also come in and generate our getters and setters if we would like to do it that way. So we can just do width like that and generate our setters. And here we're going to just say width is equal to whatever the value was that was passed into this. Likewise, we're going to be able to come in and do the same with our length. So let's just change this to length and change this to length and change this to length. And there we are, we generate all those and you can see the T's are in there. And pause the video at any point in time if I'm moving a little bit too quick. I like to use the pause button in my videos. We can create a generic constructor and to do that just put the T inside of there and we'll throw a W inside of there and T and L. And then we can come in and go width is equal to whatever the 
W's value is, and length is equal to whatever the L's value is. And let's do something interesting here. Let's go and create area. So we'll say public and string and get area. Once again, we'll go double and double width is going to be equal to call convert and to double is what we're shooting for and that's going to be whatever the value for width is and then we'll do exactly the same thing once again for our length so just change that to a length and then we're going to convert length in this situation and then after we do all of that stuff we can come in and go return string and format and we can go and print out some information on that multiplied times whatever the value for length is is equal to and then let's go and perform that calculation inside of here double width times double length all right so there we are we have that all set up and i think that's good enough so i'm gonna jump back into program or jump back so i'm gonna jump back up inside of main and test all this out see how it works and just come right here right before the read line of course and we will create our generic struct so we can go like this and say that we want to use integers in this situation. I'll just call this rectangle one is equal to new and rectangle. Once again, to find that we are dealing with an integer and throw the values of 20 and 50 inside of there. And then we'll be able to come in and output that information. Oops, hit the wrong button again, console. And here we'll just go rectangle one and get area. There that is, and then to prove that it will also work with other data types, let's just copy that, paste that right there. And here we'll have this also work with strings. Change this to rectangle two, new, change this to a string as well. And just leave this as 20 and 50, but let's put our double quotes around it because they are strings. And then change this to rectangle two as well and run it. And you can see that, yes, indeed, that works out, even if we're using integers or we're using strings or whatever we're using. And that is one of the greatest benefits of using generics. And after covering all those guys, I thought I would cover delegates. Now, delegates are going to allow you to reference methods inside of a delegate object. And the delegate object can then be passed to other methods that can call the methods assigned to the delegate. And it can also stack methods that are going to be called in a specified order. So the best way to understand them is to just see them in action. What I want to do first, though, is come down here after our struct and actually create a bunch of them. Make sure I get out of there. Yeah, I don't want to be inside of our struct definition whenever I'm creating this. So I have to come right here. Now, the very first thing you're going to do is declare a delegate type that is going to, in this situation, we're going to say it's going to perform arithmetic. And how you do this is you define the return type and the types of attributes that the methods that could be assigned to the delegates could be. So how you create one is you go public, delegates, and void. And if this isn't making sense, just after you see the example, it will. So you can say right here that it is going to not return anything and it's going to receive a double and another double inside of it. All right, and then you put the semicolon at the end of it. So basically it's saying that the arithmetic delegate is going to have the ability to be assigned methods that do not return a value and receive two attributes. So let's go and create a couple of those. So we'll go public, static, void. There's the void, just like the voids right there. And then we're gonna call this add, and it is going to receive a double. Doesn't have to be called num1, but that's what I'm calling it. And I'm gonna go, and it has to receive another double. And I'm gonna call that num2 in this situation. And then inside of it, it will just perform this arithmetic. So we'll go like this, and then we'll go num1 plus num2 is equal to and then add those together so num1 plus num2 okay and let's do another one for subtraction Come down here once again it's going to not return anything we're going to call this subtract instead of add we're going to leave this exactly the same because we need a two doubles and then here we'll change this to negative and here we'll change this to negative there they are and we're gonna jump back up into main once again and make this work. So come down here, 
And the very first thing we're going to do is to create our delegate objects. And our delegate's name was arithmetic. And I'm going to call create one called add, and another one called sub, and another one called add sub. And those are strange names, but that's what came into my head. So what we're going to do now is assign just the add method. So here we will go add is equal to new arithmetic and pass in the method add. Now that's going to be assigned to that. Now that it is assigned, well, let's go and create a couple more. We can also go sub is equal to new arithmetic. And in this situation, we'll put subtract inside of there. All right. Now it gets kind of neat because we can also come in and go add sub is equal to add plus sub. So we will be able to perform or calculate or call the method add and subtract. And anytime we go and call for add sub to execute. It's also important to know that we would also be able to come in and subtract a method out of the list. So add sub minus add. And now this is going to be back to being a regular sub. So you took the add sub, you got rid of the add method, and now it's just simply a sub again. Okay, so play around with that. You'll see it makes some sense. So it just provides a way for us to be able to add like a string of methods that we want to be calling in a row dynamically. So now we can come in and print our results. So you can see this in action. So we can say right line and here I'm going to come in and I'm going to say add and then I'll say six. Well, I don't need to do that. Let's just go add six and 10, close that off. And now I use the delegates and I can go add six and 10. And this add right here is a reference to this add right here, which is going to call our add method. Now that's kind of interesting, but what is even more interesting is whenever we can chain these different calls together. And here I'll say add and subtract and let's do 10 and four instead. So 10 and four. And now I'll be able to call add sub and we will pass in 10 and four. And you're gonna see that it works on all of those. So let's save that and run it. And there indeed you can see. In the first situation, it went and just called the add method. In the second situation, it called first the add and then the subtract method. Okay, so pretty neat stuff and a quick rundown with some examples on how to use multiple different generics as well as delegates. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.